John Fedro here with mobilehomeinvesting.net, also mobilehomeformula.com. And what is going on with this real estate market, with this mobile home market? That's what we're going to talk about in today's video uh, for mobile home investors, for mobile home buyers and sellers, uh, changes I've seen, new laws, updates, trends around the country. Let's jump into it. I put my uh, email right over here, uh, support at mobilehomeinvesting.net for a reason. If you have questions, reach out to me. Feel free to. Support at mobilehomeinvesting.net. Let's get started. Uh, I first want to talk about in like what's happening to all of us, investors, sellers, buyers, uh, what's happening to all of us. Then I want to divide those up, what's happening to investors, just sellers, buyers only. Uh, and then I want to kind of do a recap. So the first thing is price uh, and demand changes. And I don't think I have to emphasize this too much, but prices are going up around the country in some areas more than others, rural less, metro areas more so, but prices are increasing 15 to 40% versus 12 months ago. Uh, that means you may have to pay more for a mobile home. It means that you will sell it for more, at least at the current time, you will sell the home for more. Um, and that's cash prices, that's payment prices, because supply is low and demand is high in many areas. Um, two to three times, you can double or triple if you have a mobile home that you bought three or four or five years ago, you can sell it for double or triple the amount that you could years ago. This is not across the country in every single town. Um, like I said, more so the metro markets, less in the rural markets. But even in those rural and, and metro markets, um, you have a greater ability to wholesale a mobile home. As an investor, you have a greater ability to find a buyer that will pay a higher price uh, if you can talk the seller into a, a you know accepting a price that they're that they're happy for. Uh, and if you are a seller, you can have somebody help you, a broker or an agent, a local investor that knows what they're doing. Make sure you vet that person that's going to be helping you. They have a clear plan. They know how to market your property uh, and they're going to find you a qualified buyer quickly. As an investor, because prices are going up, I don't mean you should pay top dollar for a mobile home, wait a month and then sell it for you know thousands of dollars more retail price. We don't buy retail and sell retail uh, as investors. Uh, now, that greater ability to wholesale uh, has to do a little bit with people having more cash, uh, and, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And then also people can go to the bank. There's more loan products now than there were 10 years ago. If you have strong credit with a 23-year chat loan and a good down payment, you can have 5% interest rate on a mobile home, an individual rectangle mobile home, not on land. And that's what the chattel loan means. Chattel or ch chattel, uh, depending on how you pronounce that. But chattel is a personal property, uh, and a chattel loan is a personal property loan on jewelry, on a car, on a boat, on a mobile home. Uh, chattel is movable personal property. A couple years ago, you wouldn't be paying 5% interest, you'd be paying 7.5% interest. And I'd say five years before that, you're paying closer to 10% interest. If you don't have great credit, there's still loan products for you out there. We'll talk about those banks in a little bit if you're a buyer or an investor or a seller, you should still know that. But even if you have a 550 credit score and your home is from the 1976 or newer, way back then, uh, you can still get a loan for it. Some banks will lend up to 150% of what the home is worth. Let me disappear for a second here. And you can see that if you go uh, right here, there's a screenshot of nadaguides.com. It's the NADA Blue Book Value website where you can look at car prices, uh, uh, boat prices, and mobile home prices. Now, take this with a grain of salt because we really only put stock into this uh, NADA value if we're getting insurance or if we're getting a loan. I'm not going to go to someone to try to buy a, their home based on what this says, and I don't expect someone to sell me their home based on what this says because let's face it, how is this website going to take into account even if it well, yeah, it's not because the market fluctuates and one area in uh, California is going to be very different than another area of California or New Jersey. One area of New Jersey is drastically different than another area of New Jersey. And especially those two states are, you know, areas are wildly different. So do not go to the site thinking, okay, this is what my home's worth and this is what I can get. On the, in, the, in, in, in the open market, because that's not going to be the case, depending on your home, the area, the location, the size, uh, the condition, uh, the market, the time of the year. 
Um, so I hope that that made sense, but it is interesting to know that there's some banks will end up to 150% of that value over what it's worth. Uh, lumber is up almost three times in the past 12 months as of recording this video, and it was over three times uh, in the past 12 months, but it sort of went down a little bit, uh, but that's crazy. I mean, lumber is really, really up. Um, two to 11 months delay in new mobile home, new manufactured home builds from the factory. Uh, it's tough to order something from the factory and then get it the, ne the next week. It's taking two to 11 months delay because there's lumber issues. Uh, and a lot of these factories that were building manufactured homes weren't open for a while. So they have a backlog of homes that they're getting through, even though they can turn out a number of homes in a week. There's still a backlog, which compared to single family homes is still a lot less. Um, the, the builds on a or the, the, the delay on a new build is substantially longer. Uh, let's continue with investors, sellers and buyers. What's affecting all of us and talk about why mobile home prices uh, are increasing quickly. Single family home prices are shooting up and that's bleeding over into mobile homes. People want to live in an area. They want to live in a certain school district. The home prices are too high. Well, hey, these mobile homes are decent and nice and affordable and let's get in now as a stepping stone and that way we can we can be here um, lack of affordable homes due to a shortage from the last bubble in my opinion i mean affordable housing has always been lacking uh, but from the last bubble builders stopped uh, building plus there's more buyers now plus lending is easier um, and then there's sort of this stampede of like, I got to get a property i got to buy something just like there was before the last bubble not that there's not that, you know, I don't know how soon this bubble will uh, be here or not be here, but uh, there is a lumber shortage. And then also there's a, this analogy with condos that I think really fits with mobile homes as well and what I've been seeing. The, the, the saying is with condos that they are the last to appreciate in a, in a, in a rising market and the first to depreciate. Uh, in a falling market. And that's if you're buying and selling for cash or bank financing. If you're selling on payments or renting, that's a little different. But I think that goes with mobile homes, actually. The, the, the spike in prices that we've been seeing over the past few years, I believe that these mobile homes are the last to appreciate and they're going to be the first to depreciate once people really don't want them and they don't need to be in a mobile home and they can afford something else and there's enough housing inventory people are going to go to housing or going to go to more site-built homes, uh, in my opinion. Uh, and there will be a pullback in price. This cannot keep going up at this rate. Uh, there's going to be a pullback in price. There's going to be more evictions, which we'll talk about. There's going to be more foreclosures eventually. It might be this year. It might be next year. Now I'd like to talk about some miscellaneous items. Lot rent is increasing. I would say a bit more in some parks than usual. Uh, more of the corporate parks, the more mom and pop type of parks aren't raising the rates as quickly. But corporate parks, I would say 10 years ago, they raised them maybe 5% a, a, a year. And you knew that was coming. Uh, now I'd say some parks, it's over 10% a year. And if you're an investor, if you're selling mobile homes on payments, you have to keep account of that. You have to know how, what prices are going to go up because that might cut into your cash flow. If you're selling for cash... Uh, as, a, as a seller or as an investor, you should know if the lot rents are going up. And I kind of made a mention that it's not so much the mom and pops that are doing this, but more of the corporate style parks, which are completely fine. Corporate parks are wonderful to us, usually, uh, when you know what you're talking about when you go in there with a certain plan. But with regards to the corporate parks, um, that's how parks make money. You know, a park comes in, they, they buy, the, or I'm sorry, a, a corporation comes in or investors come in and they buy the mobile home park. And there's only a few ways to raise rents or to raise uh, value of the community. Obviously, yeah, raising rents. If there's 100 people in the park and they all increase 50 bucks, that's a lot of extra money per year, per month that the park is making. Uh, the park can also add more mobile homes. If there's only 50 mobile homes, they can add a couple, you know, many more, depending on how many lots are there, that increases value. And then billing back utilities uh, to the residents. So it's sort of normal that lot rent will go up and you'll know it. You can ask the managers, hey, do you expect to park, you know, lot rent increase? And if so, when? And they'll usually tell you, oh, it's usually the first of the year, or it's usually in June, or it's usually this. And they'll tell you that. Um, B, non-payment uh, of eviction. Wait, 
non-payment eviction ban uh, is now through June 30th of this year. So I will dissolve again, and you can see right here um, for the uh, CDC order. If you look at that second and fourth bullet point in the first red box, uh, you'll see where it says, are unable to pay their full rent due to substantial loss of income. So it's unable, you're unable to evict somebody strictly on the non-payment of rent uh, because they've lost income. Or the bullet point number four, or they would be homeless or they'd have to go into some sort of, short, sort of shared living situation. Judges usually don't want to kick people out if they don't have to. But you can still evict for if something happens and the people get in trouble with the police, if there's disturbances, if they're breaking the lease for other reasons, and you can prove that, um, judges will still, you know, s send people out of the home. It's your land. It might be your mobile home, and you can evict. Here's a story about uh, somebody I'm working with where um, she bought a small mobile home park. It wasn't technically a park. It's like a couple parcels of land next to each other with about eight mobile homes on them and a couple RVs. She bought that park at a really good price because the seller got all freaked out. The mobile home, the, the landowner uh, got all freaked out that he wasn't able to evict people. So he's like, you know what? I see where this is going. I'm just going to sell this community and, you know, take my money and go. And congratulations to this investor for getting in. And as soon as she did, she really went to town getting rid of all of the riffraff in there. And I say riffraff purposefully because we don't want to get rid of good people. We don't want to get rid of people that are showing effort. Uh, we want to get rid of people that are knowingly abusing the system uh, or breaking, breaking the lease in like a bunch of other ways. So I wanted to make a mention of that. Um, I hope that that makes sense. Uh, congratulations, Barbara, as well. <laughs> um, number C, or letter C, more accurately, billions of cicadas are coming. I don't know if that's going to affect anything, but I think that that's very interesting and kind of weird and cool and happens every 17 years. We'll see what happens. Uh, could that affect the market? Maybe, maybe not. Another miscellaneous item, mobile homes are kind of cool now. Not like HGTV cool, but more acceptable cool for investors if you're living in them. Um, there's more mobile home products. There's a few more commercials being out there. There was one during the Super Bowl, I believe, like two years ago. Just sort of opening up that, uh, yeah, manufactured homes are a little bit cooler. Uh, stay tuned for the wrap-up sec section where I said before we're going to kind of divide everyone up, the investors, sellers, and buyers, and talk more specifically. Miscellaneous uh, continued, number two, data plates. There's, new, there's a new law code section 3280.5 where um, across the country from 1976 and newer, mobile homes have had these data plates in, in them. And they're located in different areas around the mobile home. And it's a piece of paper that's glued onto the wall. And the new law says, by the way, these, uh, these, these data plates have information like the make, the model, the size, the wind zone of the mobile home, the serial number, um, the snow load, the weight of the mobile home, sometimes like what appliances come with it, where it was built. Uh, but a new thing that's going to be coming on very soon is that around the country, you will now notice for new mobile homes, there'll be a new section of whether a structure uh, is able, whether the mobile home is able to handle the load of an accessory dwelling unit or another kind of attachment, a porch, a carport, an added on room, uh, which is kind of another story altogether. Um, but I, th I thought that that was quite interesting, that, that, that new law. Now, I would love the new law to be that the data plate is not a piece of paper anymore. It's 2021. Can you give us something besides a piece of paper glued onto the wall that people are going to paint over or remove the wall over time or it's going to get damaged or torn? Can we get laminated, please? <laughs> or, or better yet, can you press the VIN number and all this information like into the steel of the actual mobile home's iframe. Because if you think about it, a car serial number, it's it's on the engine, I believe. It's on the, uh, where you look into the window and you see it right like in front of the driver. Uh, it's, I think it's on the door as well. Like, put it a few places. This is a common problem, but anyway, I'll get off my soapbox there. But I thought that was an interesting change. There's a few more, but they don't really affect us uh, as far as new laws coming out. Uh, now, mobile home investors. Speaking to this, to just the investors out there, and then we'll get to the buyers and the sellers. There's still hundreds of parks around you. 
uh, check out uh, the link in the video description. We talk about where to find many of those parks and how to find them around you. Family parks, yes. 55 plus parks, yes. Or 40 plus, you have to be 40 or 45 or 50 or 55. Yeah, co-op style parks where you own a fraction of the land or a share of the land or the land that it sits on. Uh, all of the above, even mobile homes on private land, like neighborhoods of mobile homes, we want all of those. Uh, parks are still investor friendly for the most part. That has not changed. And a lot of the education that is still being pumped out there for you know buying mobile home parks, those teachers tell the students to work to work with us. Yeah, work with investors that know what they're doing. You know, you the park owner can own the land and we can go ahead and invest in the mobile homes. Um, we'll talk more about that a little bit later because some parks are doing something a little bit different. And we'll talk about that. Uh, but it's important to have a script and it's important to know what value that you add to the community. There's a handful of things that we can do when we're dealing with an individual mobile home park. We can obviously buy vacant mobile homes that the park has and doesn't want to rehab or doesn't want. Uh, we can help the sellers that are behind on payments uh, or sellers that need to sell. And then also going to number three, there's I'd say a, an, an uptick in parks that are wanting, number one, older homes removed. Guess who can do that? Investors. We can help remove older homes from mobile home parks, whether they're from the 70s, 80s, 90s, or even the 2000s. Some parks want to upgrade, and if it's 20 years old, they want it out of there. Now, if it's from the 70s, you might have less options, but there's still usually options. And parks want homes infilled. They have empty lots that need to be infilled, and that means that they can have you as the investor move a home into their community or sell them a home uh, at a good price or move a home into the community. Maybe they pay for some of that moving cost. Maybe they do not. Um, number four, park offices are opening more and more because of COVID. They were sort of closed for a while. You had to do things by appointments. Uh, or just over the phone, which is still the case. I would say as investors, we were meeting managers face-to-face -face 50 to 60% pre-COVID. Now we're meeting managers, well, in like the heat of COVID, we were meeting them 10, 15%. Now 25% or so, they're gonna be in the offices. You can meet with them face-to-face. -face. Again, make sure you know what you're doing and what you're saying and the goals of that interaction. Um, number five, state uh, state offices, state closing offices, uh, title offices, they're open more and more. Uh, yes, sometimes by appointments. Yes, online. You can do things by mail. Uh, some states, when you're transferring title, there's a backlog of anywhere from between four weeks. In some states, you can get the title expedited like while you're in the office. But in some states, it takes weeks or even Months, I'm looking at you, California, uh, nine months backlog for you to get your title that you just purchased. Now, don't let that uh, uh, make you uh, lose any sleep with regards to, well, John, if I have to wait nine months to get my title, how on earth am I going to sell the home? I got to wait nine months. It doesn't work like that. And it's you're able to resell these mobile homes. Um, I won't get into that in this video, but it was just it's just interesting that and I, I'd say California has been like a six month delay for a while and it's just kind of going up on, on titles, but it is still business as usual, basically. Um, and I say business as usual as the new, the new normal or the new usual, uh, but things are opening up more and more and more. Uh, as investors, let's continue this. Uh, best business practices, uh, I don't want to tell you what to do, but aim to be respectful of people, wear a mask. Uh, pretend everyone is immune compromised, uh, whatever you believe, it's your company policy with regards to, okay, I have to wear a mask. My boss tells me, my partner tells me to wear a mask. And then I'm, I, I understand that around the country, wearing a mask is more popular and in some areas it's less popular. I don't want that to distance you from your uh, buyer or from your seller necessarily, you know, and that that can distance you a little bit. So I say this because the person watching this video is, is different. You know, everyone's a little bit different, but try to have it as a company policy where you wear the mask. And then if you feel comfortable, if the seller feels comfortable, then feel free to take off the mask. Um, and that way you can have a little bit more rapport. People can see your mouth. They can see your smiling face. Uh, but that's my unsolicited advice uh, for that. Um, still be professional, be on time, give sellers two to four ways to help them. Every seller, there's multiple ways that you can help them. 
Uh, some are more valid than others, but there's multiple ways you can help them. Uh, again, number seven, that non-payment of uh, eviction ban is, um, uh, well, it might be extended, but for right now, recording this video, it's on June 30th is when after that we can, there might be a lot of evictions coming up. Well, there will be a lot of evictions coming up in foreclosures just when. I would say that, and it's changed, it's fluctuated over the last year, but I'd say right now while I'm recording this video, um, in April of uh, 2021, there's about 25% less sellers on the market than we normally would have because it's, and I've said this in other videos, that normal, every year we per as investors, we purchase deals from sellers that need to sell because they're either getting evicted, they're about to be evicted, or they're behind on payments to the community or to the bank. And those sellers, while there's still some of them are selling, some of, some of them really have their claws in and are saying, nope, I'm going to get caught back up. I'm going to, you know, pay off my house. I'm going to pay off the park. I'm going to get caught back up. Some of them will with stimulus money, with some state um, the eviction diversion program money. There's a lot of money being given to states to have people not go through eviction and to catch people back up. But still, a lot of those folks won't get caught back up or they'll use the money for, some, for something else and they'll just abandon their home. Um, so there will be more sellers coming up and there will, anyway, said enough about that. Uh, bank lending is easier for some buyers. Like I said, if they have a 50-50 credit, or a 50-50, a 550 credit score, uh, the home can be older. And I say that because as investors, 90% of the time we're selling for either cash or bank financing. Even if we're wholesaling, we're selling for usually cash. It's when prices get up to, 40,000, 50,000, that's when more people need to go to the bank. And going to the bank when you're selling a mobile home and someone says, hey, I wanna get bank financing, that's gonna take time. As If you're the investor, make sure that that buyer is paying lot rent in the 30 plus days it's gonna take them to go to the bank. There's gonna probably be an inspection needed, so be aware of that, and that inspection may scare off the buyer through normal wear and tear the inspector's job is to like notice everything wrong with the home. And that sometimes scares away buyers, like normal wear and tear in a mobile home might scare away some buyers. So it's better if possible to sell for cash just because it's there's little contingencies, there's no third party bank. Um, but bank financing is a real thing and you can make a good bit of money uh, by selling to buyers that are bank qualified. And there are more lending products out there. So if you're able to do it, do it. Uh, let's continue with mobile home investors. Uh, there's a lot to talk about. As mobile home investors, there's more of a need to attract sellers and find sellers traditional ways, I'd say more assertive and more aggressive ways and strategies, and using technology before, or using technology to find and attract sellers before these sellers decide to put their homes online or to, to decide to list their property with some kind of agent. I want them to know about you, to see you, to hear about you, uh, or for us to find them. And when we do, we have to act fast. We don't have as much time as we did 10 years ago or five years ago. Sellers have more options, which I've said that has been a theme of today's video, uh, more buyers with cash, more investors, more lending options for sell for it should be buyers, more lending options for buyers on number 10. Uh, number 11, more sellers needing to sell and remove the home. That's a way that we create value. Absolutely. Mobile homes in parks, mobile homes on private land, mobile homes that have to be moved. Uh, I've said it before in this video. So we definitely are seeing that because people want to get a new home while rates are low um, and then upgrade their home. So 75% of mobile homes are on private land. Only about 25% are in the parks. So that 75% of folks are now kind of, oh, I can upgrade and oh, look at these beautiful manufactured homes. And, and I read a statistic that many folks, like 38%, I think, of manufactured home buyers that are buying newer mobile homes want to have it as their forever home. Whether that will happen or not is, is to be said. And I'm not a big fan of brand new mobile homes um, as an investor. And I don't think that like the salespeople do any services to the buyers because if you're buying these homes at 40, 50, 80, 90,000, you're putting them in a park um, or on your own piece of land, that mobile home 
usually is going to depreciate, especially if it's new. You're not, unless the market keeps going up, and we all know that markets always go up and they never go down. I mean, if it always goes up, great. But on new homes, I get a lot of emails from people being real surprised or I go visit people at their homes that are selling mobile homes that they're not going to get what they want because they bought it new. And then over a couple of years, it really depreciates. And I know we've been saying that prices are going up, but there's still a line of like, well, you just bought it new for you know eighty thousand. Are you really going to sell it for a hundred thousand? And if so, to who? And if they can just buy a newer home, why are they going to get yours when they can go to get a new one? Anyway, not a big fan if you're a buyer watching this or an investor uh, on new mobile homes. If you plan on selling them in the next couple of years, if you're going to live in a mobile home for the rest of your life and that's the one you want, get a new one if you want. But if you plan on reselling a new mobile home in a couple of years. Uh, maybe new is not the way to go or know all your options or email me uh, on that email address that was uh, up on the screen earlier. Uh, number 12, park demand is up. Uh, higher prices of parks usually means that when people buy the parks, they have to raise lot rent. So park demand is up, meaning lot rent is going to continue to rise. Um, and most of it is within market rent. It's not like you know, if we're selling on cash, we can still usually make three, four hundred dollars a month on two and three bedrooms, sometimes one bedrooms as well. But some parks are greedy, like some parks you'll notice for no reason. There's no extra amenities and like there's three parks next to each other. One is like nine hundred dollar lot rent or let's say six hundred to make it more uniform around the country. One is six hundred lot rent and the other ones are like four hundred. So if you're in a park where there's extra $200 of lot rent for no reason, it's probably because the owners are kind of greedy uh, and they want to make that money. Um, number 13, real estate investment trusts are on the rise. I'll disappear again. Uh, UMH Properties, that's a nationwide real estate investment trust where people can, these, these are all on the, uh, I don't know if they're on the NASDAQ, but they're all traded uh, and you can buy stocks in these, in these, in these, uh, in these REITs. Uh, UMH Properties is up over 100% the last uh, 10 years. You have Equities Lifestyle or Equity Lifestyle Properties. Uh, they invest in more higher end communities. They're up over 300% the last 10 years. Sun Communities is up over 10% uh, in the past 10 years. Uh, it's just interesting to see that everything's going up, even the stocks. Number 14, I would say that there's a small uptick in greedy and shady park managers, mostly newer managers that sort of have their hands out wanting a little piece of the pie because they know that what you're doing is more profitable. Back in the day, we could sort of get away saying, ah, these deals are, you know, they're kind of skinny, but now not that this is just an uptick as well. Most managers won't want a compensation if they help you, but if they do help you, or even if they don't help you, some managers have their hands out wanting something or you can feel that from them. And that's what, you know, if we want to take care of managers, that's what we do. Uh, some folks I work with, most times we pay a few hundred dollars. One gentleman I work with gives a thousand dollar a fee to the manager if they hook them up with a buyer or a seller. And if you're a manager getting $1,000, which is more than I pay for a manager, this is like, that's a lot of money. But that manager is really going to love you a lot. Um, but anyway, that's number 14. Number 15, most parks are remaining land leased communities. I've seen where in some areas, they're like some parks are switching over to RVs. Uh, or some parks are switching from people owning the mobile homes and leasing the land to the park wanting to own everything and then renting out all of the homes in there. But that's rare. Or most parks, they're, they're land lease communities where the people own the homes and the, the owner of the land owns the land and that's it. They charge rent on the land. Most parks are staying like that. The typical rental mobile home park where you rent the land. Investor recap, now it's the recap times. Uh, investor recap, act fast. Uh, there's more competition from buyers with cash and other investors. Market yourself online, offline, online, offline, online, offline. Uh, uh, orthodox and unorthodox ways, really. That's a, a big portion of this business to let people know who you are and find you. 
uh, when they need to sell and for you to find them. Number three, you may have to pay more than a few years ago, but you can sell for more as well. Don't be holding the bag uh, don't be holding an expensive mobile home speculating that the market's going to continue to rise. Um, if you're into a home for like over 15, 20 grand, um, get all your money back ASAP. Either sell for cash and make money or get a large move-in fee from your payment buyer to make your money back still in 6 to 12 months. When you're selling a home on payments, we want to make our money back in 6 to 12 months or less maybe longer depending on the area, but not much longer, and create at least minimum of five years cash flow where you're making 300 minimum per month. And if you wholesale, you'll make a few grand, give or take. If you're selling for cash, I want you to double your money. Number four, make multiple offers to sellers. Make multiple offers to sellers. That's definitely what we want to do. Number five, selling for a higher cash price than ever before is real. Uh, don't trust sellers. Don't trust buyers. Don't trust park managers. Don't be rude, but verify everything. A seller recap. Uh, if you're a seller and you have 90 days or more to live in your property and you're not like rushed, your back isn't against the wall. If you have over three months to sell uh, and you live in a fairly populated area, um, aim to sell for a higher price than you think that you would get uh, because you may get it and people will still lowball you as well. Uh, lot rent is going up and up. Be aware of that. Be cautious of shady buyers, investors, managers. Verify everything when you're a seller. When you're a buyer, the same goes with you. Make sure you verify the sellers, verify the managers, verify everything. Uh, that's in number two. Uh, number one, you may need to spend more to find a home that you like. Uh, unless you're doing a lot of the strategies that investors would do as well to find those off-market properties and s sellers that um, yeah, are, are not advertised. They don't want a retail price. There's something else going on with their property. There's title problems. There's deferred maintenance. There's a lot of repairs needed. There's back taxes. There's ownership problems. The home's got to be moved. There's other legal and non-legal issues. Um, those are the usually the deals where we can purchase them most inexpensively uh, and then create a profit and sell them for more as an investor and as a buyer you want a good deal too uh, act fast as well as a buyer you don't have to don't feel bullied or anything but if there's a good deal you might want to act fast know your lending options 21st mortgage is what i was talking about that does 150 uh, percent triad financial services you can check out them as well both are nationwide companies that uh, operate in most states I hope that that was helpful. How long was this video? I was aiming for 15 minutes or less. I probably got long-winded, it probably went over that. Uh, if you have any questions, again, there's my email, support at mobilehomeinvesting.net, support at mobilehomeinvesting.net, uh, or go to mobilehomeformula.com for more information, or mobilehomeinvesting.net. I've said my website's way too many times on this video. Thanks for watching. I hope that this was uh, very interesting to you and you found a lot of value. If you did, please hit that like button if you're listening to the end right now. Uh, thank you so much. Or maybe you're out of the room right now. I'm talking to your plants. Uh, but hit that like button if you can. Share the video if you can. That would be awesome. And uh, yeah, feel free to watch more videos. Uh, if you have any questions, again, like good video ideas or you just have a specific question, you're a buyer, seller, or an investor, email me. I'll, I'll try to help. Okay, talk to you soon. Bye-bye.